Well, I asked you all over on Twitter, as well as my community tab, which video you wanted me to make first. Either what Empire Records taught me about love, or my strange obsession with Buffy the Vampire Slayer as a child, and an overwhelming majority of you wanted me to talk about my strange obsession with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so let's do this thing. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health, and what I like to do sometimes is not only pull different topics from movies, TV shows, pop culture, and things like that, but I try to use my own personal experience and my own mental health recovery journey to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And like I mentioned, I put up a poll over on my community tab, as well as over on Twitter, so make sure you're following me on social media, at The Rewired Soul over on Twitter as well as Instagram because I like to get feedback from all of you on what types of videos you want me to make. All right, but anyways, let's jump into this thing. Um, this idea kind of came up. Uh, some of you know that I've been talking about making videos about uh, TV shows and movies and things like that. And I was actually sharing a story with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, the other day about my obsession with Buffy the Vampire Slayer as a kid. And I for a lot of us, just through my experience of working in a treatment center as well as talking with a lot of other people who have had mental health issues, a lot of them stem from childhood, all right? So a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know, I am the son of an alcoholic mother. She's been sober over 13 years now, but she didn't get sober until I was 20. So not only was I being neglected by my mother, but my father raised me and he was constantly working. So I was often raised by movies and TV shows. And for a lot of us, when we're neglected as children, from what I've learned through my experience, is that we latch on really hard, um, not just to other people, right? Like friends or someone we might have a crush on, but also like fictional characters, right? So I was obsessed as a child growing up with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just absolutely loved it. Like I actually uh, wanted to name my son Xander because I've just always loved that name and it stems from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So yeah, wasn't allowed to name him Xander, but hey, I don't know. Anyways, but I absolutely love this show and I could really just, I, I loved it. And like just this idea um, when you're a kid and you feel neglected and you just want attention, you want to be heard and things like that. Like I was so in love with this show that I wanted to reach out to the cast members. Like maybe, I don't, I don't know what it was, maybe just to get some attention. And looking back at this, like this was in the, dang, 90s maybe nah it must have been the 90s so i don't even know i don't remember how i got their contact information um i, I it was like for the studio or something like you know you would send like fan mail when you were a kid so i have two stories one of them's a little bit brutal but the other one kind of has a happy ending i guess so anyways you obviously had sarah michelle geller and i had the fattest crush on sarah michelle geller when i was a kid her being uh, Buffy and just being a badass. And then that movie Cruel Intentions came out and she was looking mm, good in that. Well, anyways, so I wrote her a fan letter and I can't remember what the fan letter said. Just something about, you know, how much I, I loved her and loved the show and da 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 you know, all these things. Writing this out, I must have been maybe, I think I was like maybe 10, 11, 12, something, somewhere around that age. I know it was before, like more maybe during middle school. And I wrote her this fan letter. And to my surprise, one day I get home from school because I always check the mail. I open it up and I got a letter from Sarah Michelle Geller herself. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh my God, right? So excited. This, this uh, celebrity who I have a massive crush on, you know, wrote me a letter back. So I open it up and it's a picture. It's a picture of her like posing like as Buffy and it's signed like, you know, Sarah Michelle Geller and uh, XOXO, something like that. I wish I still had that picture, right? So as a thank you, because I was a polite child, I decided to write her another letter back thanking her. And then next thing you know, within a week or two, I got another letter from Sarah Michelle Geller, And I open it up and all it is, is another signed picture that says Sarah Michelle Geller XOXO. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at these two pictures, right? And it's like clearly a stamp, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. So she's got like an assistant or something like that that is just sending out these 
these fake autograph pictures whenever she gets fan mail. She's not even doing me the courtesy of reading the letter I have sent her. And I have poured my heart out to this woman, right? And that was the other thing. Like I, growing up, I had a lot of problems with emotional regulation and black and white thinking and things like that. Black and white thinking is somebody that's all good and then they can go all bad real quick. So once I saw that, I was furious. I was absolutely furious, all right? So I decided, I decided to write her another letter just saying how upset I was that she wouldn't even do me the courtesy of sending me a, a real autograph picture because it was clearly just stamped, right? Or B, like sending me an actual letter, an actual response. And it's interesting now because you see that in the influencer world today, like um, YouTubers, you know, influencers and things like that. They, they try to communicate with the audience when they can and it means a lot to them, you know? But back in the day, I guess they didn't know about that courtesy. So anyways, I send her this angry, angry letter about how upset I am at her. And then a week or two goes by and I get a letter from Sarah Michelle Gellar and I open it up <laughs> and it's a signed photo of her that says Sarah Michelle Gellar XOXO. So I'm sitting there with three photos of Sarah Michelle Gellar all with fake signatures and I was just really upset. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. So real quick, real quick, while I was editing this video, I was like, hmm, I wonder if anybody else received this exact same photo of Sarah Michelle Gellar. And I found it, I found it in a Google search. Here it is. Here's the exact photo that she sent me three copies of. <laughs> so it looks like Sarah Michelle Gellar was cheating on me and sending this photo to other people. Best of everything. <laughs> and I, it completely changed my opinion of her as a person, and I was very upset about this thing, all right? But anyways, the other character that I had a big crush on was Willow, played by none other than Allison Hannigan, who got a little bit more fame when she was in the American Pie series, and then she grew up and she was on How I Met Your Mother, and I had a really big crush on uh, the character Willow for a different reason. Cause like Buffy was like, you know, the main character, she was out there, you know, everything like that. But I remember growing up, I, I would get really attracted to women who were a little bit more shy and introverted. They, I don't know if it just seemed kind of like they were a little bit more obtainable, right? So I had a whole different reason for having a crush on uh, Willow played by Allison Hannigan. So, that uh, that summer vacation, like, I can't remember, like, I, I remember writing, um, I can't even remember his name, the guy who plays Xander as well, because I could really relate to him as well. Uh, but I, I wrote a letter to Allison Hannigan, and I wanted to, like, I don't know, I wanted to, like, meet up with them. Like, I, I had this, I remember having this idea in my head, like, I could meet up with these people, and they'll, like, be my friends, and it'll be so cool. And I remember, like, wanting to meet up with them, like, just, like, at a restaurant, just having lunch with them, right? And anyways, I wrote a letter to Allison Hannigan just asking her to like, I don't know, just like, please like, you know, write me back or call me. I can't remember if this was before or after the Sarah Michelle Gellar incident. But anyways, I, I wrote Allison Hannigan a letter just saying like, you know, at, at least like if you can call me and I could talk to you, like that would be awesome, right? So I ended up writing her that letter and then I filled up pages with the word please 1,000 times, all right? 1,000 times, like as a child, I had this obsessive thinking, you know? So I spent hours upon hours upon hours and I'm left-handed and I'm writing it in pistol, pencil, so I'm like smearing it as I'm writing it, just please, 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 for pages and pages until I got to 1,000, all right? So I wrote that letter, put it in my little envelope, sending it off and I was at summer, I was uh, on summer vacation, during summer vacation, I was visiting my mom and uh, yeah, I ended up getting a phone call and like, I forgot, like my mom brought me the phone. She's like, hey, it's for you. It's some woman named Allison. I'm like, what? Like by this time I totally forgot. And I'm like, hello? And I remember, I'm like 10, 11, 12, something like that. And she's like, hey Chris, it's Allison Hannigan. I got your letter, it was so nice. And I just absolutely froze. I totally froze. Like this whole thing of like wanting to meet up with them, wanting to talk, wanting to do whatever. Like Allison Hannigan actually called me and I totally froze. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Um, she thought it was funny how awkward I was. 
the call maybe lasted like three minutes and basically I, I just blew it and I stuttered like an idiot. Like just said, yeah, I'm doing good, summer vacation, all right? And we got off the phone and that, that was my experience with that. So I, I think she kind of balanced out the situation that happened with Sarah Michelle Geller. But anyways, what's the moral of this story? Um, throughout life, like until I really started working on my mental health, that's just the way my brain worked. And it can still work like that today. Like I, I can get obsessive thinking where when an idea pops into my head or I really like something, and this is something that a lot of people um, in recovery from addiction or even in active addiction struggle with, like they lock onto things, just absolutely lock onto it. And they, you know, just obsess over it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do videos about movies and TV shows, because I would watch the same movie 50 times, right? I would binge watch, you know, the same show over and over and over again. And, and it created like almost like an unhealthy obsession. And we even see it in the world today. Like this, this type of mental health issue didn't just go away, you know, now that we're geared more towards like, some of us are geared more towards YouTube than we are TV shows and, you know, famous actors and actresses. And I think, in my opinion, it's almost worse too now with um, YouTube creators because it feels as though, you know, there's less of a middleman. You can get, you can get to them easier, right? Because back in my day, I was handwriting letters, you know, stamping an envelope. Like when's the last time you sent out a letter unless it was like something to do with like bills or something like that, you know? But like now we have social media, we have, you know, YouTube comments, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, you know what I mean? And I think, you know, when I look at the world today and people's like defense of, you know, or their stand relationships with YouTubers, they feel even closer to people than ever before, right? But what's interesting about what I was going through was like, these were fictional characters. It wasn't even like the real, you know, actual person. And as I grew older, and I can make more videos about this, but I had obsessive thinking about a lot of different things, about other shows, um, but then it even happened with people. And this is something that I talk about, you know, with just some of that emotional dysregulation I struggled with for most of my teenage years, as well as my early 20s. And it could be very, very damaging in relationships. I think a lot of it comes from a, a, a combination of this intense fear of abandonment, as well as this intense, uh, this intense like wanting to be loved or cared about or even noticed, you know what I mean? And it took me a lot of work and a lot of effort to get out of that way of thinking and find this kind of balance with it, right? And I know a lot of you watching my videos, you struggle with that intense emotional dysregulation where you just, you know, it's it's one of two extremes. Like you just absolutely love and obsess over somebody or you just hate them and you want nothing to do with them even more, right? I anymore, right? It's like these two extremes and what we gotta find is that equanimity and that kind of balance in between. But anyways, Thought I'd share that story. Thanks for voting. Again, go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. I like putting up polls to see what you guys uh, want to talk about. I am still going to make the video about what Empire Records taught me about love. Tristan and I just watched it again last night. I'm like, oh God, right? Because I, I can really relate to that in growing up. So, um, but yeah, if there was any like TV shows or characters or if you can relate to anything I'm talking about, let me know down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, get some exclusive content, get involved in our Q&A, you can click or tap right there. All right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.